All right. Chapter 9. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about transducers. Um, again, remember, we're just we're breaking this down, you know, step by step. So we talked about, you know, all these frequencies and PRPs and PRFs and who makes them and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, it all starts from the transducer. So this chapter is devoted to basic transducer construction and transducer frequencies. And we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into, you know, the real nitty gritty on these transducers, I guess, if I really use that, I really say nitty gritty. That's awful. Anyway, um, we're going to, we'll talk really in detail about these things in a later chapter, but so, so kind of Annette and Lacey reel it in a little bit and, and, and really just concentrate on the basics right now. Had to pick on you, sorry. <laughs> uh, a transducer is a device that converts one form of energy into another. All right. There are transducer examples on table 9-1, just so that you kind of understand, you know, the idea. Remember, we learned this already uh, or in an earlier chapter when I made you understand that when we make a sound wave, the process is that electrical energy is converted into sound energy and then that sound energy coming back is then converted back into electrical and we have a picture. So ultrasound transducers perform two functions. During transmission, electrical energy from the system is converted to sound. That's how the pulse is made and then we send it on its way, right? So it goes from electrical to sound or acoustic. Remember, acoustic is another good word. During reception, the reflected sound pulse is converted into electricity. So that sound pulse goes, bounces off, comes back to the transducer, hits the crystal, and is then converted back into electricity, and voila, we have a picture on the screen. That should sound familiar because you've been tested on it already. So piezoelectric, these are each called have specific names when those when those happen at those specific times. The piezoelectric effect when materials create a voltage when they are mechanically deformed that is the piezoelectric effect or when that crystal is hit with that with whatever energy that is hitting it and it turns it into a voltage that's the piezoelectric effect so this happens during reception because that sound wave comes back to us strikes the PZT crystal it vibrates or deforms and then creates that voltage so sound is turned into electricity the flip side of that is the reverse piezoelectric effect. When materials change shape, when a voltage is applied to them. So we know that when we make a pulse, that electric current goes through the wire, strikes the probe, or strikes the crystal, I'm sorry. It deforms or vibrates, creating a sound pulse. Okay? So that happens during transmission. That electrical energy is changed to acoustic. Just however you have to memorize it, grasp it, understand it. That's what the each effect is called when you break down that process into transmission and reception. So again, this is the dirty picture that everybody laughed at in class. We have the electrical impulse striking the crystal, it vibrates, turns into a sound beam. Hits the organ, comes back, strikes the, the crystal, vibrates, turns back into electricity. So understand which one of these is the piezoelectric effect and which one is the reverse piezoelectric effect. And I'm not going to tell you, you figure it out. So piezoelectric materials, okay? Piezoelectric materials actually have that capability of converting sound energy into electricity and vice versa. We need that to make ultrasound, to, to make ultrasound possible. 
Uh, it's also called ferroelectric. Just understand the two terms. It's the, the ability to either create, to make electricity into sound or sound into electricity. Uh, what we use in transducers is called PZT or lead zirconate titanate. Just learn each one of those because they're registry specific or important to the registry. I'm going to use PZT crystal um, ceramic probe or ceramic anything like that. And I'm, most of the time I use PZT but understand what it is. It's PZT or lead zirconate titanate. So PZT is an ultrasound, uh, in an ultrasound transducer is also known as the ceramic, the active element, the crystal. That's what they're talking about. That's what converts that electrical energy into sound and sound into electrical energy. Again, here's a blown up picture on the left. This is um, highly um, uh, blown up or microscopic, whatever. And just the probe in general to the bottom right. So basic transducer construction, there are seven basic components. There's a case, electrical shield, acoustic insulator, the PZT or active element or ceramic, whatever you want to call it, the wire, the matching layer, and the backing material or damping element. Go through your book on page uh, 119 and it breaks each one of those down and I think I even told you what to highlight in the book, which is, which is more important or how I'm going to test you. The more, more, most important aspect of each one of those definitions. So that's something you're just going to have to memorize um, and just understand. But these are very simple and straightforward. Um, the case protects the internal components of the transducer from damage. It insulates the patient from electrical shock. The electrical shield prevents electrical noise. Uh, from contaminating the clinically important electrical signals. The acoustic insulator prevents vibrations from the case from inducing an electrical voltage from the PZ, in the PZT of the transducer. In other words, when we excite it, we want it to be excited. We don't want anything else exciting it. And clear your minds of dirty thoughts, but we're talking about crystals and transducers and probes here. The PZT or active element, uh, the crystal, that's the crystal itself, shaped like a coin. Very important. The PZT is one half the wavelength thick. Stick it in your brain somewhere. Whatever you got to do. Very important. That's a registry question. Uh, the wire, of course, is the electrical connection between the PZT and the ultrasound system. Um, very straightforward. The matching layer is very important, something we're going to talk about in depth. It's positioned in front of the PZT at the face of the transducer. It increases the efficiency of sound energy transfer between the PZT and the body. It also protects the active element. Very, very important. It is one fourth the wavelength thick. Stick it in your brain somewhere whatever you have to do. It is now one-fourth, the matching layer is one-fourth the wavelength thick. So if I ask you which, what is one-half the wavelength thick, you're going to know what? PZT or active element. If I say what is one-fourth the wavelength thick, the matching layer. Know those. The backing material or dampening element reduces the ringing of the pulse. It restricts the extent of the PCT deformation. We control it. Remember, we want less ringing. And what does less ringing do? Give us shorter pulses, which enhances what? Axial resolution. So let's talk about the matching layer. We recall that the differences in impedance result in reflection at bound boundaries, right? Larger reflections occur with greater impedance differences. We learned that the last chapter. Impedance of PZT is about 20 times greater than the impedance of skin. So we have, to, we have to have a bridge, right? Otherwise, we would have these giant reflections and sound would never be transferred into the body or transmitted into the body. So if, sound, if the sound beam traveled directly from the PZT to the skin, a vast majority of the intensity would be reflected back into the PZT and never into the body. We'd never have an ultrasound picture. The matching layer 
provides us with an impedance that is between the active element and the skin. Remember, it just bridges the gap. This decrease <clears throat> decreases reflections at the PZT and skin boundary. Therefore, a greater percentage of sound is transmitted between the active element and the skin. But we need one more step. We need to complete the bridge. So, remember, we use gel. So the gel then falls between, the impedance of gel is between the matching layer and the biologic media, or the skin. That completes the gap. We can now transmit all of that ultrasound. Gel further increases the percentage of sound transmitted in, into and out of the body. We're coupling, or we're, we're, we're putting together, or we're, we're bridging the gap. However you want to learn that word, we're basically bringing everything together so that we have complete transmission of our ultrasound beam from the PZT, through the matching layer, through the gel, and into the skin. Uh, the matching layer and gel increase the efficiency of sound transfer between the PZT and the skin. Decreasing order of impedance. I'm sorry, I misspelled that. So you have the PZT, the matching layer, the gel, and the skin. And it, without the matching layer and the gel, obviously there's a great difference of impedance. So you'd have reflection. So we stick the matching layer in there and the gel, and voila, we have transmission. Whoa, look out. All right, so the matching layer is one fourth the wavelength thick. We said how important that was, right? The active element of the PZT, or PZT, I'm sorry, is one half the wavelength thick. Remember that, That's, those are very important statements. Table 9-2 tells us that. Uh, just simply know I can only ask one way, right? You just have to understand it. So check that out in the book. Um, I'm going to pause it right here and start over with a new because I'm running out of time. So this will be, uh, this will be, the next video will be part two of chapter nine. So hang in there with me.